Hi all, my name is Artyom and I write Rust for a living. On some days, on other days I write a camel, which seems to be this killer combo nowadays in terms of the meme game. Um, but the thing is, when I picked up this book about four years ago, I could not imagine that Rust would become this force of nature that it is right now. Um, and I personally have developed kind of love-hate relationship with the language. Uh, I love it because it is just so much better than, you know, everything else in terms of the, uh, in the system programming space. It, it really uh, has elevated the game. And uh, yeah, I mean, like on, on, on many axes, uh, the ergonomics of the language, developer experience, safety, uh, you name it. And I also hate it because it's not perfect, which I understand is a tall order. Uh, but I mean, overall, I think it's pretty damn good to be in this particular spot in terms of, you know, language design. Um, anyhow, um, I recently started doing this um, series about um, kind of writing a ray tracer in a camel, which is coming along nicely, but um, doing something, you know, like a, a piece of software in two different languages so that you can compare and contrast what works better, you know, where uh, is more than two times the fun. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I will continue the OCaml series, and I will also start doing the uh, Ray Tracer in Rust. And uh, hopefully there will be some interesting observations along the way. All right, so uh, for those who didn't see the, uh, the OCaml videos, the plan is the following. There is this um, book called uh, Ray Tracing in One Weekend, which is excellent. Uh, basically, it implements a simple but functional ray tracer in very small amount of code. So we, like if we scroll down, um, it's really just, you know, these small snippets. And at the end, you have something like this as a result, which is kind of fully ray traced with reflections and, and refractions and whatnot. And so um, what I want to do is kind of life code, um, you know, what is going on in this book, but instead of C++, which is the implementation language used in the book, use Rust instead and just he see how it how it fares and maybe also draw some comparisons with with the with the OCaml version <clears throat> um, so the plan for this video in particular is to um, set up the project and uh, output the first image which uh, looks something like this basically this uh, weird gradient so without further ado let's roll Let's set up the project. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the developer experience part of Rust is pretty great. So we can just do cargo in it, name of the project, which I'm going to call Racer because it's ray tracing in Rust. Here we go. Um, let's open Racer. Yes, I trust the authors. And uh, so what we have is just a hello world binary um, and a like a basic manifest file. Cool. So let's try to run it. Hello world. Exactly as expected. Perfect. Um, so if we get back to the book. Uh, the goal is to output an image in the um, PPM format. So the format is pretty straightforward. It's plain text. Um, we start with the P3 thingy at the top, then columns and rows, then 255, which is the maximum value of a color, and then RGB triplets. 
So what we have is this piece of code that produces an image 256 by 256 in BPM format. And uh, it basically does this kind of weird gradient. Let's see if there's anything else. No, that's pretty much it. So what I would like to do is, instead of just doing this in line, define instead some you know, data types uh, and do a bit of domain modeling. So let's um, switch to main and define a struct. And we'll call this struct image. And um, the image will have a bunch of pixels inside. That's not <laughs> quite big brain domain modeling, but this will work. So it will be um, a vector of a vector of some pixels. Uh, we don't have a pixel yet. So that's what we're going to define next. Um, so the pixel is going to be just a triplet red. Uh, and this is going to be just a byte value, green, blue. Oops, RGB. Um, so the cool part, at least compared to OCaml, uh, here is that we can define the pixel to be a struct of three bytes. And uh, this will be kind of efficiently represented in memory. Um, all right, so now let's um, create a couple more things here. Um, so one thing I would like to do is uh, start maybe with the um, some basic testing uh, setup for the project. And uh, for this, I would like to use this library called K9. If you haven't heard about K9, um, it is not very easy to search for, but uh, if you know that it's K9 Rust, you will see. Um, this is a library by Aaron Abramov. It is pretty awesome. And what I would like to use from this library is like a, it's, it is a general testing library, but in particular, what I would like to use is the snapshot functionality. And to demonstrate what it means, there is this GIF or GIF. Um, but the idea is that you just have some piece of code, an expression, and uh, this expression is rendered inside this macro. And the result of the rendering can be either compared to this kind of existing snapshot or updated if you're in the process of working on a particular piece of code. So let's um, add K9 to the project. And for this, we're gonna use cargo add def K9. Let's see if it's gonna work. I think it did. Okay, it also pulled the last version of K9, which is great. So then if we define a testing module and let's guard it by the configuration. Um, let's define a test. And here we're gonna use K9 snapshot. Um, so obviously the easiest thing for us to do is to do something like, hello K9. You're awesome. Okay. Let's do cargo test. You see that the snapshots don't match, right? So we expect this, we've got this instead. Um, but what we can do is K9 update snapshots one, and then we do either cargo test, or what I would like to do instead is cargo watch test, and um, 
um, watch just the source directory and clear the um, the command line. All right, and so what we have here is K9 automatically updated um, the, the snapshot. And if we change things here, let's say, you will see it immediately gets updated, which is really, really cool. So um, let's um, define a couple more things here. So what I would like to do next is implement a few things for the image. So first of all, we need to be able to create a new image. And uh, for this, I would define a function new, which will take height and width and produce an image. And so here you can see I use the self keyword, which just means image uh, inside the impl. And this is a really nice touch because it means you don't need to rename a whole lot of different things when you just want to rename, let's say, a struct from image to maybe img. Uh, Anyhow, so what we need to do is uh, we need to create this vector that will contain a bunch of rows. So let's say that's going to be vec with capacity. Then uh, we just go from zero to height. And here we're just going to push a bunch of pixels into the vector. So what we can do here is we can derive a default trade and use it here. So this thing will give us like a pixel with RGB equal to zero, which is fine. And here in the end, we just create <clears throat> the struct. So this already allows us to create this kind of um, empty or like filled with images filled with black. Uh, what we could do as well is create another function. Let's say new within it. And also we can create um, this another parameter which will accept a function that would initialize every pixel of an image based on its row and column. So uh, for this, we will use oops, init, and uh, we're going to use this impl trade thing, which will accept a function, use size, use size, pixel. So the impl trade is a an interesting syntax sugar for a generic function, which just uh, kind of accepts different kinds of objects that implement this trait and then specializes code to these different kinds of objects. Um, but uh, here we use impl instead of something like f um, where f is this thing. So this is more or less equivalent. All right, so now we create the image. Then we go over rows and columns. And we just return the image in the end. 
So here we need to use again like the self colon colon. Um, and here we need to access pixels. All right. Uh, so now we can create images. The remaining thing that we need to do is to serialize these images in the BPM format. And by serialization, I just mean kind of formatting, uh, like plain text formatting of the images content. So one thing we could do is we could just define display trait for image and make it output PPM, but I don't like it because there are many different kinds of image formats. And so if we just make display output PPM all the time, that's not very configurable. Um, and I guess like the same problem kind of exists in other languages that use trade systems. So Rust, Haskell with type classes, uh, Scala with implicits, um, the same kind of problem. And in all situations, the workaround is to kind of define this thing called new type, uh, which is kind of a wrapper for your base type, which allows you to tune whatever trait implementations will be used. So um, in summary, what I'm going to do is the following. Let's define a struct, the new type thing called PPM. And this PPM um, will accept something, right? So that uh, needs to be a templated structure or generic structure. And uh, we don't want to take ownership of the thing that we want to print in PPM format. Instead, we would like to just take a reference. Okay, so far so good. Um, so now we can define an, a display implementation for PPM of pixel. Um, so the first thing, the first argument here is the lifetime. Uh, we don't really care about the lifetime here. So we just use the, um, the syntax. Uh, for this the second thing is going to be a pixel uh, now we use the code action to implement the missing member and the result would be pretty straightforward we just output three numbers here so we accept access the pixel r And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If we go back to the test, let's change things a bit. Um, let's create a pixel here. Um, Okay, and now if we try to sort of uh, print the pixel right away like this, this is not gonna work because we don't have a debug implemented for pixel. If we try to do PPM of pixel, unfortunately this is not gonna work either, um, but what we could do is we can define debug. And what this debug will do, it will just delegate to display.
And as you can see here, we just output one, two, three. If you make it uh, like 42, this is gonna be 42, two, three. That's, that's great. Um, now let's create another test here. And in this test, we'll actually create an image. So let's say an image, uh, which is gonna be like two by three. And here, this is gonna be row call. And uh, what we can do is just create a pixel where R is gonna be row G is going to be call and B is going to be zero or 42. Okay. Not okay because we need a byte, but here it's U size. Now oh, this is okay. So if you do the K9 snapshot, This is not gonna work. We have not implemented display for PPM of image. Let's do it right now. If we refer back to the um, ray tracing thingy, so we need P3, then columns and rows, then 255. Um, so what we're missing here is the columns and rows inside the image. So let's um, define these functions. Take ref self and uh, one thing we want to do here is probably just add an assert that height and width are greater than zero. Okay. So let's start first line P3. Then it's uh, width and height. to output all the pixels. All right, and we need to wrap this in uh, PPM. up okay all right and um, what we're also missing is the debug trait yeah so although the trait system or type classes or whatnot has its own limitations. But the fact that 
you can do this kind of um, type directed dispatch um, it just it just feels so good uh, very ergonomic uh, especially for something like uh, formatting if something implements a trait like a display or debug you can just have a very uniform way to format things uh, unlike you know camel where usually you need to explicitly compose all these formatters um, to output this um, kind of aggregate type but anyhow so let's mark this thing with a test attribute and lo and behold we have an image which is kind of exactly what we wanted um, i guess one thing i would like to change is make this constant width so let's um, scroll up to the to this thing come on so we use three all right very nice so now we have like all the um necessary plumbing in place so let's actually create functionality to create an image and output an image into a file all right so let's do um something like this and here we would use file create uh, come on yeah when in dub just add question marks um then you're gonna create an image then we're gonna write this image into the buffer in ppm format um we're gonna flush and let's say um successfully generated an image um, so one thing we're missing here is the question mark operator can only be used in functions that return either a result or option or something that i think implements this uh, try thingy although from residual that's something that they haven't seen before but uh, the solution to this is to make it return studio result and then yep the error went away um, so now let's create the sample image function and for now i will just uh, copy paste this thing more question marks but I think we should be good um, so what we can do is we can just cargo run and this should generate an image let's see sample ppm yeah so this tiny thing here that's our image um now let's improve on this so the um let me just move it maybe here
and let's implement the same exact functionality inside this sample image function. So the only thing we're kind of missing right now is kind of the body of this uh, closure. So let's do first we need an image 256 by 256. And by the way, let's just um, do cargo watch run watch the source folder and clean hey what's up mm. i think the image should have it should have been regenerated uh, but for some reason it's not. Maybe I could just... I'm not sure, let's see. Save. All right. Uh, no, that's, that's wrong. Or not. Um... Okay, how about... Okay, so that's actually the real image. Cool, so... We already have some weird gradient, which looks close to this, but uh, let's do the same functionality, um, just for completeness. Okay, and here we don't need these uh, things, we can just use RGB. Um, in line and what I like about again like the ergonomics of the language is the field punning so you don't need to do this if it's the same name you just do R and that's it that's kind of the same thing um, uh, happens in the camel with field punning um, but let's say something like F sharp uh, doesn't have field punning which has been a mild source of um, frustration for me but anyhow in rust that's that's very nice touch very ergonomic and so you have seen that the image has just regenerated and i think we should have the same gradient yep from green to red and um, it's like what i particularly like about this setup again same thing with the camel in this kind of dune watch mode same thing here uh, with cargo watch is that when i change the code the image is getting regenerated and it's really uh pretty much real-time sort of feedback loop which is very nice i like it a lot okay so maybe as a recap what we have done so far is so we have generated a project using cargo in it um, this project defines uh, some basic data structures like what is a pixel what is an image um, it, what is a ppm format and how it's uh, how to format things in ppm format uh, we also have some snapshot tests which again can be updated uh, as we change the code and finally, the, the uh, binary itself produces an image in PPM format, which uh, we can have side by side with the code and see how it's getting updated in real time as we change the code. That was fun. Um, in my opinion, pretty straightforward, pretty quick setup, um, really nice setup with the snapshot testing and auto update of the snapshots, inline snapshots. Um, and overall, I would say the ergonomics uh, of the language is pretty good. It's um, not that we had a lot of code to write, but already, you know, we have defined some custom data types, uh, some custom formatting functions. Um, th there was a bit of compositionality going on. 
and um, everything in this development cycle was really responsive. It's like the uh, the LSP was very responsive. The the binary uh, runs very fast, uh, gives this, this instant feedback. So um, overall, I'm pretty happy with how this went. Uh, but obviously, there are many more parts uh, that um, will hopefully shed more light on some of the pros and cons of using Rust for these types of projects. But uh, for now, thanks for watching. I hope that was interesting. See you next time. Peace.